Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I'm your host, Chris Broussard. And we've got another tremendous show for you as the NBA playoffs heat up. We've got Tim Hardaway, should be Hall of Famer from the 1990s, one of the best point guards of his era. He'll be joining me for my interview. But before that, we're going to start off, as always, with the top five postseason player power rankings. And at number five, a surprise, Kyle Corver. That's right. I'm going to give the role player, the great shooter, some love. After struggling in Boston, he was the Cavaliers' second best player in the two games they won in Cleveland to even up the series. Averaged 14 points a game, shot 9 of 12 from the field, including 6 of 9 from 3. And more than that, he played great defense. That's right, 37-year-old, slow-footed, athletically challenged, Kyle Korver deed up, and that was critical to Cleveland getting back in the series. He blocked three shots in game four, including two on the ultra-athletic Jalen Brown. At number four... Jalen Brown. I know he got his shot blocked a couple times by Kyle Korver. I know Boston looked bad in Cleveland, losing two games. I know Brown only had 10 points in game three, but he had 25 in game four, and the way he played in the second half, including the 15 points he had in the fourth quarter to get Boston back within striking distance, I think that may have given the Celtics momentum and hope as they head back to Boston for game five. So give it up to the young Jalen Brown, just 21 years of old, taking it by the reins and saying, look, I'm going to play with some grit. I'm going to get going in this second half to get my team ready for game five. And at number three, Chris Paul, CP3. CP3 has been maligned throughout his career for struggling at times in the clutch, but he came up big in one of the biggest moments of his career in game four in Oakland as the Rockets beat Golden State. Chris Paul was outstanding, 27 points, including eight in the fourth quarter. James Harden looked winded, didn't really have it going offensively in the fourth, so Chris Paul stepped up and was absolutely tremendous, and he did it all on a sore foot. Notice, you haven't heard about the foot. When Steph Curry, who I love, struggles, everybody blames it on his injuries. Everybody blames it on the knee. But Chris Paul is playing on a bad wheel, and he went out there and played tremendously to give the Rockets a chance to get back to the NBA Finals. At number two, his teammate, James Harden. That's right, 30 points in game four. I know he struggled offensively down the stretch, but Harden has been great. Harden's reached a level where we're criticizing him for scoring 27 points and doing things like that. He's averaging 29 and a half points in this Western Conference Final, and people think he's struggling. He's doing it on 45 and a half percent shooting from the field. That's his most accurate, his best field goal percentage of any of his series in the playoffs this season. So Harden is getting it done, and not only offensively, surprise, surprise, but in game four, he was outstanding defensively. That's right, he set the bar higher now. Nobody's going to let him get away with those terrible defensive outings anymore. That Matador defense, go by me. He showed in game four in Oakland that he can D up when he wants to, pick the pocket of Kevin Durant, made a few steals, got in people's way, did a good job on that end of the floor. That's why Harden is number two. And at number one, LeBron James, and it ain't even close. LeBron James has been absolutely outstanding. After getting an F from yours truly in game one against Boston, he has been tremendous. 37 and a half points a game in the last three games. 59% shooting. And oh, 
outstanding turn back the clock throwback defense in games two and three in two, three and four in Cleveland blocking shots blocking passes getting deflections setting the tone for the oldest dirt Cleveland Cavaliers to play great defense and win those two games in Cleveland to go back to Boston with a chance to return to the finals for the fourth straight year LeBron James hands down the number one player in the postseason player power rankings. All right, we welcome in Tim Hardaway, five-time NBA All-Star, five-time All-NBA player, and most recently was an assistant coach on Stan Van Gundy's staff in Detroit for the past few years. Tim, how you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I can't complain, man. You know, just come from San Francisco, got inducted into um, the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame, and um, my family was dead. Mully and, and Mitch was dead. So, you know, we had a great time. Well, congratulations on that. And uh, I know your teammate Chris Mullen uh, said that you should be in every Hall of Fame, <laughs> meaning not just the <laughs> Bay Area Hall of Fame, but the NBA Hall of Fame. Uh, what are your feelings on that? You, Mitch is in, Mitch Richmond, Chris Mullen. Uh, you haven't gotten in yet. Most people think you're one of the greatest snubs ever to not be in the Hall of Fame. But what are your feelings on it? Well, you know what? Uh, at first, I was uh, I was kind of upset at first. And, um, um, you know, when I didn't make it the first couple of years, and then I come to realize, you know, I have no control over that. You know, uh, whoever got control over it, they got control over it. And, um, you know, if they want me in, I get in. But other than that, you know, I think nobody could really just, um, you know, push anybody's hand or, or, or try to, you know, um, um, you know, make them do what they, they don't want to do. Um, so I don't have no control over it. It's, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, when you just walk around um, the country, and people, you know, say you should be in, in the Hall of Fame, Basketball Hall of Fame, and, and there's no um, uh, no doubt about it. You, you should be there. And while you're not in there, I tell them the same thing. I have no control over it. And, um, you know, we just move on and, and try to control what we can control, and that's what I try to do. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that you made, as I mentioned, you're a five-time All-NBA and in 1997, you were first team. And the first team was Grant Hill, Hakeem Olajuwon, Carl Malone, Michael Jordan, and you. I mean, that's a heck of a team. Do you feel like, I mean, besides the Hall of Fame, do you feel like you get your due historically and people kind of recognize how, how much you were one of the top players? Well, you know, right now, a lot of, a lot of these guys, kids, we, we, we didn't play when it was um, – social media. We didn't even have yep. NBA TV back in the day, you know, so now they got to yep. go on YouTube and they got to, you know, find us on YouTube, find us on, 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 on different, you know, Google and all that type of stuff. But back then, you know, we didn't have none of that stuff, but now they got all that stuff now where everything is so escalated and, and so many realms, you know, that it's, uh, that you, you can see it each and every way, you know, you, you see a crossover now, 17 different ways, you know, you see somebody go to the basket 17 different ways, you know, they, 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 like I'm looking at James Harden now, they showing his dunk on Draymond Green, they showing it how he went past the guy five times, you know, this angle, that angle, this angle, that angle, you know, we didn't have that yep. back in the day. So, so, um, you know, um, it, 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 you, you can't do nothing about it. You can't do nothing about it. Like say, you just move on. Um, um, you know, kids, you hear kids talking about this person, talking about that person, and I just laugh because there's no way that you can, uh, it, 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 first of all, I, I don't argue anymore, but it, but it, you can't, you can't really make these guys or kids understand what we did back in the day because they weren't born back in the day. They live right now. They're looking at LeBron. They're looking at Chris Paul. They're looking at James Harden. They was looking at Kobe, which they supposed to. And, and, and I'm happy that they doing that, you know, but you know, it, 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 this, it, I don't get my just due because there was no social media, but you know, you, you the NBA guys, the true NBA guys that know about 
the NBA understand, you know, what, what, what happened and what I did and how I did it. I was going to ask you, because you've been coaching, you, you coach Brandon Jennings, you got Reggie Jackson in Detroit, um, and obviously you know a lot of the current players. Do they understand how good you were? The, not, not the fans, but the players. Yes, Today, yes, they do. They, yes, they, yes, yes, they do. They come up and say, you know, they, they talk to me. Um, you know, they ask me, you know, how did I do crossover? They ask me, you know, how was it back in the day when you played, you know, with the Chan check rules and, and um, how did you develop, you, you know, your game? And, I, you know, I just talked to them about, you know, we play a lot of one-on-one. A lot of these guys don't play a lot of one-on-one to get their games um, together. We play a lot of one-on-one, a lot of two-on-two. And um, we just played, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't think about who was going to win or who, who, how, how they, they, how they was going to beat us. The only thing we wanted to do is get better on offense and get better on defense and, uh, and, 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 and see, you know, how um, uh, people like to play on offense, you know, how, how I could get Chris Mullen and, and Mitch Rich from the ball at this particular time when they're coming off the down screen or when they're coming off a curl. You know, when I can read their minds and, and un- know when they go in the back door, they just look at me and, okay, I'm going to back door him now. So, you know, just the chemistry and the camaraderie, that's, um, that's why we played the game and, 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 and after practice or worked on our game after practice to make each other understand if he plays this way, this is how we're going to go to the uh, back door. If he plays this way, we're going to fade and come back for a dribble handoff. Um, you know, I like to get the ball right here at the shoot uh, at the three point line, or when I curl, I like to have receive the ball here. So you know, that that's the tendencies that we we love to to uh, have at going into games, knowing each other, um, um, you know, inside and out, where we need the ball and uh, how we need to score. So that, I mean, kids today don't do that. But, yeah, that's what I talk to them about. You know, you got to talk to your teammates. Don't be afraid to talk to your teammates. It's not a it, – it, a lot of these guys take the criticism tough. It's constructive criticism, I tell them. You know, it, it, it's the heat of the battle, but it's always constructive criticism. Like Draymond Green, he gets on his guys, but it's constructive criticism. You know, mm-hmm. he's telling them what they need to do and how they need to do it for them to win the basketball game. And his guys understand that. Most guys on other teams wouldn't understand that. They go in the hole or they go in the shell and they'd be like, he's singing me out. But no, that's, that's yeah. a guy that wants to win and that loves to win. You mentioned the crossover a few times. You were known, that was known as your signature move. They called it the killer crossover. I remember, in fact, once I was talking on uh, ESPN Sports Center about the greatest crossovers of all time. And you texted me like you better remember my crossover. <laughs> exactly. So tell exactly. me about tell me about your move and who inspired it or what inspired it and how you kind of perfected it. Well, you know, coming out of um, high school, college, um, from the city of Chicago, you had to have a move. You had to have uh, something, and that's all we did was dribble, 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 dribble to perfect the move. We played one-on-one constantly. And back then, you know, it was hand-checking, holding, grabbing, pushing, shoving. So you had to, to perfect the move to get by somebody. And um, I just perfected the move. Um, you know, I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I was just doing a move where I could just get to the rim and make a play for my team or myself. And um, it developed, it really developed in college when we, you know, after, after practice, we'd play one-on-one. Uh, two on two, and I get to the rim very easily with that move and make a layup, or or get to the rim and, and pass it out to a teammate for a jump shot. Um, and then in the NBA, you know, when I started really doing it almost every night, and um, you know the guys around the NBA saw it, they um, they was like, you know, hey, Magic was like, hey, he got a killer crossover, and um, that's where it went. But um, <coughs> Excuse. Were you but, the um, first one? Were you? I mean, I, I assume some guys did it before, but were, were you the first oh, one yeah. kind of to do it? Well, you know, Archie Griffin, longtime L.A. guy, uh, um, went to the Philadelphia. I think he got traded to Philly or New York. But Archie Griffin, every time he see me, he he lets me know about that. Yeah, you know, I had to cross over first. 
And I was like, okay, Archie. Uh, for guys don't know about Archie Griffin, y'all need to look him up. He had a nice crossover, too. But you know what? I learned, I, my idol was Isaiah Thomas when I was growing up out of the city of Chicago. And I, and I, and I uh, um, built my game after his game. I just watched him, how he dribbled the ball, how he, how he studied people, how he uh, uh, mesmerized people before he, you know, he took the ball to the basket. Um, um, he go left hand, right hand. Um, a lot of people don't know that Isaiah used to dunk on, on a lot of people going to the rim. So, you know, I just out of my game after him, just the toughness, um, just being small, I always have to shoot over people. People always telling you that you can't do this, you can't do that. And I had to go out there and prove myself each and every night to show people. And I had to have confidence each and every night to, sh- to prove to them that I can do whatever you say I can do. Shoot over high king, shoot out of, over Patrick Ewing shoot over anybody that I go to the hole against, you know, six feet, nine, 68, seven feet. It didn't matter. I just had to um, just show you that I can make a shot over the uh, big fellas, floaters and all that. So um, um, I tried my game after him. And then, you know, I saw, you know, you, you look at all these guys from the East coast, uh, like Pearl Washington, you know, he, he shook somebody off the screen uh, when he, when they played Georgetown one day, I was like, wow, did you see that? He got real low, crossed the guy over real low, and uh, he didn't put it between his legs, but he just faked one way and crossed him over. I started doing that. I couldn't do it that way. So I put it in between my legs and just uh, went in between my legs and did it that way. So, um, um, you know, that's that's how I perfected the real crossover then after I saw him. That was like my freshman year in college. But – um you know, you just look at people and you pick up stuff from different people and, and, and take it to another level. Now, one guy, that, especially among the young people that's known for his crossover is Allen Iverson. Uh, you've been critical of Iverson's crossover, though. You're saying it was basically a carry. Carry and travel. You know, I never <laughs> said nobody up. I just came down and did it. I mean, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's not critical of nobody. I'm just telling the truth. You know, everybody think you know you, you being you, you critical or or you uh, 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 saying something bad or negative. No, I'm not saying nothing negative or bad. I'm just saying mine was better than his. I came down. I didn't carry. I didn't set my man up. I just did it. It was in a Florida game. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not trying to criticize nobody. I'm not trying to be <laughs> negative to nobody. I'm just telling the truth. And, and, you know, and people want me to hear the truth, I'm just giving the truth out there. That's right. <laughs> now, the players' handles today are crazy. I mean, you got Tyree Irving, Steph Curry, Chris Paul, and all that. And, and I'm saying I think one of the reasons that the handles are the way they are today is because they let dudes carry, which I don't think was going on in your day and before, certainly. Is that is that fair? I mean, are dudes basically carrying all the time? No question. No question. I tell you, I give you a prime example. Sometimes Kevin Durant gets the ball and he carries and he moves four or five steps into the into the lane. You know, um, um, yeah, he, he carries the ball between the dribble. He'll yep. pick it up and move his feet four or five times and then dribble again. We like that's a carry ref. I mean, even though that's his move, that's what he's been doing. But that's still a carry, you know. Yeah. Uh, Kyrie Irving, he got handles, you know. Kimball Walker, he got handles, you know. Um, 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 who else and out those there are that handles got handles? Without carrying, the, those, say, without those carrying. are handles. With, yeah, without carrying. Um, Chris Paul got handles without carrying. Sometimes James Harden, yes, he does carry at times and travels with the ball at times. So uh, I mean, but you know, it's hard to dictate what's a carry and what's not a carry. Until because the refs are wrapped up in the game, they wrapped up in so much stuff. You know, they wrapped up in and who I, I got to call a foul here. I got to watch this guy uh, uh, push him this way. They wrapped up in so yeah. much stuff. The referees. So when when it does happen, it happens real quick too. It happens real quick. And if you're not on it, you know uh, they 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 won't call it. Uh, like like the other day, we was at the game. And we saw Draymond Green double dribble. The ref called it three seconds late, but it was the correct call. <laughs> and Draymond knew that he double dribbled. So, I mean, sometimes that stuff happens so quick. And the refs are getting back on defense and transition. They got to watch where they're going because they don't want to run over the coach or some of the players or any of the fans. 
And so, they, I mean, it's, it's kind of tough. Now, I've said Kyrie has the best handle of all time. What do you think of that? Of all time? No, he has, he has nice handles. I mean, right now he has great handles. I mean, because let me, let me tell you this. You know, the rules are different today than they was when we played. So with his handles, you know, we would be able to get up into him and, and probably, you know, put our forearm into him and be more physical with him. All right. Okay, you can but hand check I mean, he still, you can hand check back then. Now you can't hand check. So he's, he's super dangerous now. You know, you can't, you can't touch him. So if you touch him, I mean, it's a foul. No question it's going to be a foul. If I was playing in this era and Isaiah with the handles that we had and Chris Jackson, I do, Raul, uh, with, the, with the handles that we had, I mean, we, we would excel big time in this, this era. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because, you know, people look at this as the era of the point guard because you got all these dudes putting up these all-star numbers. And I and obviously you got some good point guards, but I, I've always said I'm not sure these guys are better than the point guards of the 90s or the, even the 80s. But I just think you do, when you played, you had a center or a power forward who was going to score. And, you know, you guys did post-entry passes. You had post players that scored. So there weren't a lot of point guards that were like the first option on their teams. Whereas nowadays, you don't really have that many bigs that score. So I think you got – and point guards over-dribble now. They dominate the ball a lot more than y'all did. Y'all dribble – like you said, y'all dribble with a purpose. It wasn't just 20 seconds dribbling, dribbling – and then either take a shot or pass to the man that's going to shoot. Um, so I think if y'all had played this way, y'all would have put up the same type of numbers that a lot of these guys are doing. Is that fair or or not? Um, that's fair. You know, I think, I, I, you know, it's two ways to look at that. I, I want to say that that when we played, we we thought about, because the era and how we was hand checked, we need to get there quick because we don't want nobody to hand check us and get up into us and, 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 and steer us into ways where we didn't want to go. So we had to make a move quick and do it quick and, 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 and get to the hole quick. Uh, and when we dribble, yes, we dribble for a purpose. We dribble because the guy was going to do a cross screen and then we had to wait for the down screen to go get him, and we had to throw it into the low post. You know, Don Nelson gave me a rule. He said, Tim, we know you can take your man every time. There's no question about that. But if there's not a fast break and we um, and you pitch it up, pitch it up, go through, let the ball swing, let everybody touch it. And when you get it the second time, you can do whatever you want to do. Then you can get the ball, you can dance a little bit, you can you go ahead and do your thing. But he said, but, but, but you, you got to swing the ball. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So I swung the ball, and when I got the ball, and that's why I tell young guys today, I say, you're going to always get the ball. The ball won't always find you. Once you give it up, the ball won't always find you. If you swing the ball, run the office, and come back around on the other side, the ball won't find you. Once it finds you, then you can do your thing because the defense is not geared up or set up to, to stop just you. And I think now the, 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 the defense now with these guys are geared to stop these guys because they want to want and ball dominant now. But I'm going to tell you this. My dad told me this a long time ago. There's not no position on the, on the court. Everybody is everybody. Everybody is a man, one man. Everybody's two men. Everybody's three men. You just got to perfect your game the way you need to perfect your game. All right. Uh, uh, look at the Golden State Warriors. They got this, uh, uh, what you call that, the, uh, the uh, something five, okay? They yeah, go the out Hampton's there. Five, yeah. yeah, the Hamptons five. All them, all them guys are guards. Them are not centers, okay? They play like centers. Draymond Green play like a center. Anthony Davis yeah. play like a, a guard. You know, even um, Cousins play like a guard. So yeah. your game has to be an all-around game to get around people off the dribble, um, make a play off the dribble, shooting threes now, shooting pull-up jumpers now. Everybody game has to revolve around being a, a guard's game now because if you can't be like a guard now, you, you can't go out there and play the basketball game the way it's played today. And, and, 
and and my dad told me this, you know, when I was in like in seventh grade, and it and it's coming to true now that everybody has to play just like everybody. I mean, a guard can post up like I used to post yeah. up. A guard can post up anybody, but that don't mean that he has to to shoot the ball. That just because he want to make a play. Draymond Green post up. He don't shoot the ball. He's make, letting the offense run so he can make a play. So that that's the way the game is today. Well, people debate what era, like, you know, the 90s when Jordan was dominant versus today's game. Which one is better? What, what are your thoughts on, you know, was the basketball better back when you played or is it better today? Well, you know what, we, we had to think the game back in the day because there was it, it, it was an illegal defense, okay? And you couldn't go down and double team without the ball. You couldn't be in a zone without the ball. So I think today, today's game is just play, 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 play. But back then it was a thinking game, you know. You had to think of how you had to you strategize, how you had to guard somebody. Then you had to strategize how when you wanted to come down and, 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 and um, um, double team and rotate. And, and, and we could put bodies on people back then. You know, you could really, you know, if a guy come down a hole, you could, you could really, you know, check him. That wasn't a foul. You know, you could, it, it was running, it, I tell people it was running like a running back running through the middle of the line, uh, middle through the um, line. He had to protect himself. Every time you went through that lane, you passed the ball, you went through that lane. If you didn't protect yourself, your ribs were hurting. So, yeah. you know, it, it was totally different. It was totally different. But, you know, I, li- I like the game the way it is today. You know, I, I like them running and gunning and shooting. I think sometimes some people shoot, you know, you're talking about a heat check. I think somebody shoot too much for a heat check. But, you know, that's the way the game is today. And um, um, and it, it's, it's an enjoyable game. I mean, it's an, it, it's, it, whoever gets hot at the right time in the course of a game, then you're in trouble. It's hard to stop them, especially, you know, like Golden State Warriors. Or like um, Houston Rockets did last night. You know, they they, yeah. they they kept the pressure on them all night long. They kept the pressure on them, and that's what you got to do. And and if you and and if um, the uh, the Dubs come out and um, and you can sustain the third quarter, then you in the game. Now there is a lot of great point guards in your era. I mean, you face Stock, John Stockton, Gary Payton, Jason Kidd, Iverson, Stephon Marbury. And a little bit of Magic and, and Isaiah even later in their careers. Who was the toughest guy for you to play against? Oh, man. You know, I caught on Isaiah at the end of his career. Magic at the end. I wasn't sticking Magic. He's 6'9". So, you know, and I always say this. You know, a lot of people don't give him his just due. And that's um, Rod Strickland. Rod Strickland yeah. was one of the guys that was, that, was tough, that was tough for me to guard because he had handles. He gets to the hole. He can make plays at the rim. But another guy, Kevin Johnson, he was very tough to guard, you know, uh, coming he just down. Stay healthy. Uh, he, that was his problem. Right. That, that, that was his problem. He just couldn't stay healthy. But, um, you know, it, it was hard to uh, guard him, too, when he was healthy. Those two guys was, uh, was, uh, gave me problems. Um, you know, uh, the glove. Six, 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 seven, long arms. Um, you know, when it, when it when he was in it, he was in it. He was in, he pick you up full court. Uh, tenacious defense. Uh, could score. Uh, you know, with the best of them. So you know, it, it, those three guys, I I, I would say, uh, um, gave me problems. And um, and the two guards with the Knicks. You know, I um, I wouldn't be uh, giving them they just do either. You know, we had some great battles with the Knicks. Uh, now you talking with about Charlie I mean, Ward, had... with Charlie okay. Ward and uh, Chris uh, with Childs. Chris, you know, Chris, uh, um, Childs. Okay, so they were yeah, just physical you know, and defending. They, they were just that. physical and def- defending and all that. And uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm just talking about with them two on defense. They, they was, you know, they, they worked me. They worked me hard, and and, and uh, I love, you know, taking the challenge with them. And that's what made the rival. So great between Miami Heat and Ghost State War. I mean, um, Miami Heat and um, New, New York, York Knicks. Knicks. Yeah. Yep. Now, when you played in Golden State, y- your teams were coached by Don Nelson. Um, a lot of people <sighs> give Mike D'Antoni credit for kind of sparking this modern basketball era. But I know yep. you feel like Don Nelson gets slighted in that regard. No question. No question. Again, 
we back to YouTube. We back to um, um, social media. You know, uh, the kids and everybody wasn't born and wasn't watching TV um, when, because we was on the West Coast. They they didn't see us on the West Coast. We was on what was that NBC Game of the Week, and yeah, then um, yeah. um, um, uh, maybe maybe starting ESPN starting it. You know. Uh, uh, have us on uh, or TNT. No, it was TBS. I'm sorry, it was TBS. TBS. So, yeah, yep. you know, so so they really wasn't watching us, and and on the west, on the east coast, they was you know they wasn't up late at night at 10 30, 11 30 watching us play. So, um, you know, Don Nelson, I, 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 our, our, um, uh, Draymond Green was Tom Tober. You know, Tom Tober yeah. used to bring the ball up. That was our point forward or our, our point center, and we used to run offense with him. Just a way to go and stay Warriors run offense now, and uh, you know Don Nelson don't get his just due because nobody really saw uh, what he was trying to do. The same way going to stay Warriors and uh, uh, Houston Rockets are playing today. That's the way we used to play, and we used to call it control chaos. You know, offense people didn't know what we was doing. We just say motion. We just motion. We just move without the ball, back screen, come up. You know, it was hard for them to um, switch because back then there was no switching. You know, you, sw- you switch us. Now, why um, didn't guys switch? Because why did guys switch because, so much? Because the positions? Because the positions. So, so say like say say like a, a, a seven-foot guy is not going to switch out on Magic Johnson and leave a, a six-five guy on Kareem. You had yeah. to get over the screen. You had to push over the screen and play your man. You know, I mean, I, I mean, you know, you you got you got. Say like a, a, a two guard, six seven, um, coming out and you putting your um um uh, six seven guard on 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 um Patrick Ewan and your center is guarding Allen Houston or Latrell Sprewell. Come on. Yeah. You know you <laughs> that that was unheard of. Because if they did switch out on me, like if you six seven, six eight, you switch out on me, we I, we was we was told go to the basket, don't shoot no threes, go to the basket, make somebody help, pass it, pass it, somebody's gonna be open. And that's what yeah. we did. And, and so there was no switching. So that's why um, motion offense was good. You try to switch. We look back door. Even if you didn't try to switch, if your head was turned, back then if your head was turned, we were throwing bullets right past your ear or a bounce pass right past your leg for a layup. And uh, now that's, that's, that's what you got to have uh, camaraderie, and that's why you got to know your teammates and what they're they, what they doing out there. Like the Golden State Warriors, they know what they're doing. We knew what we was doing out there. You know, they slip a lot. We slipped a lot. So, you know, Dan Tony did, you know, uh, uh, the accolades or, or the, saying that he's the one that invented this. No, it was Don Nelson all day long. So if you – if those some of those teams you had in Golden State, I mean, y'all won 55 games one year. You know, you had some success but never could really get over the hump. If you took that team in today's era – how good do you think y'all would have been? Oh, we would have been real good because of, because of the rules. The rules messed us up, you know. I mean, you had a uh, small four. You had Mitch guard uh, Sam Perkins that time, or you had Chris Mullen guard um, 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 James Worthy or Sam Perkins. You know, Sam Perkins, Perkins six eleven. You know, yeah. we switch out, switch off on Vladi Divac. He's seven feet. You know, the rules today would have definitely benefited benefited us with when we when we were played if we was playing this era because we 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 that's the way we played though that's the way we tried to manipulate the rules and we got caught on a lot of a lot of illegal defenses too so uh and we had to we had to go down we had double team because big, it was bigger people that we had to, that we had to play against um uh, but you know and that was that era. We 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 did some things in that era, and, and if we, I think if we would have stayed uh, together a long time, because you know we we uh, Nelly traded Mitch to uh, Shaq yeah. for Billy Owens, but if we would have if we would have played together a long time, we had something going, and we would have figured it out some way. We would have figured it out how to get over that hump and uh, make it work in our in our favor. But um, like like you said, days in today's era, 
yeah, we would have fitted very well in this area. We probably wouldn't have been a, we we would have been right up at the top of the echelon and and in, in our at this era right now. What what's your best Don Nelson story? Oh man, you know Nelly had a lot of them. He had a lot of them. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, sometimes he'd come in and say, you know, he had a tea time at at uh, you know eleven thirty. Come in, all right, let let. Whoever can make a half short, half court shot, uh, there'd be no practice. Uh, oh, really? You know, y'all really. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. We had, um, we had. Uh, uh, sometimes we had qu- quizzes. All right, and you had to. Everybody had to know how to draw on the board the way a coach draws on the board and do and, and draw up a play. So if you couldn't um, do the Wigby line for dribbling. That was like five dollars off. If you didn't go and um, knew how to um, draw a line to uh, for a guy to to pick and and set your man up to come over and and, and, and draw and just draw the diagrams, that was that was deduction off of, uh, off of, uh, uh, off the paper. So, but this is thing. So we used to we used to practice this way because we we had a bunch of plays and we 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 had to know each other's position. If you didn't know each other position, uh, like 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 Mitch had to play five, Chris Muller had to play one, I had to play four, uh, Tom Tober had to play three, and the center had to play two. So we had if we called out a play, and if we didn't know that play, we had to run sprints. Wow. I mean, wow. if you, if one person messed up, we had to run sprints. So so. So that's why we was in the game. We knew what we had. We we when we called out a play and we said, "All right, so and so you at the two, so and so you at the three, so and so you at the four, so and so you bring the ball up." We knew exactly where we need to go, and the other team was confused, and they was like, "Well, what are y'all doing?" Yeah, I said, "You're yeah. seeing in one second, and we we and we just knew it. We didn't have to call a timeout." So you know, Don Nelson had he was very uh, innovative. Uh, he knew the game inside. Now he was always funny, um, uh, and I saw him um, on the, in the pitch. You know, he he lost all that weight. Uh, he's looking very good. He's living in Maui now, and um, um, you know, he's always fun, always fun, and I always had love that love to have a good time. Now you also played a little bit with Latrell Spreewell. Um, you got mm-hmm. any great stories about Spree? Spree. Spree was fun. Spree never touched the basketball all summer long. I've never seen this before. <laughs> never touched the basketball all summer long. And then come to, to uh, uh, practice. First day of practice. Never came and shot with us or nothing like that. Came in first day of practice. And, and it looked like he, he played all summer long. Worked on his game all summer long. I mean, he, he was just a, he was just a, we call him Gazelle. He always was in shape. Uh, Good guy, always a good guy, always loved to play uh, when he came to the gym. Got there early, worked on his game, stayed sometimes late, worked on his game. Uh, but he was, um, you know, the tra- it, 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 he was funny because he loved, he loved electronics. He loved electronics. He loved, his, yeah. he, he loved diagramming, um, you know, hit rims and all that type of stuff. He loved, he loved fast cars. I tell you one story that he um, – we was inside. We inside the arena in the locker room. He parked his car where where the guys parked their car now. But the uh, the locker room was over the same way. We could hear the trail coming in from outside because that's how loud his music was. He's like, "Dude, are, are you deaf?" He's like, "No, I can just fine." I mean, he could, he just played his music loud all the time. I'm like, I, I can hear his music at times. When I was on the plane, and I could just hear his music through his um through his headphones. I'm like, dude, you, wow. you got some loud headphones. Yeah, but now Latrell, he's you know it's it's funny stories that we that we got to keep inside. Can't a lot of things you can't you can't say. <laughs> yeah, now you were involved. Well, let me say this because I know your your career stats were like <laughs> almost 18 points a game and over eight assists a game. But when I look at your numbers, your best seasons statistically were all like your second, third, and fourth seasons, I think, before you had a knee injury. You had a serious knee injury and missed 
the 93-94 season. Did that, did that injury take anything out of you? You still had some great years after that, but did that take anything out of you? It did. The first couple of years, it did. And then, um, you know, uh, not playing um, minutes uh, or getting some playing time when Rick Allenman came in um, kind of hurt me, too, uh, because I knew I could still play this game. And um, I think a lot of people thought I was finished. Um, I knew I wasn't finished. I knew that I could still play. So um, um, they traded me to Miami Heat, and um, from the, it went from there, you know. And I tell folks, it's not – I don't think – it's probably one other person that made an all-star team that had a, 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 a fatal uh, injury like I did at ACL, and that was Bernard King. He came back and went to the um, – and went to one um, all-star game. I came back and yeah. went to three all-star games after that injury. And, uh, and you know, all NBA team, first team and second team. Uh, and, uh, yeah, first team and second team after that. So, you know, um, um, I knew what I could do. Um, um, you know, it was credit to, to, to uh, Pat Rowley, of course, bringing me in and, um, and, um, and saying, hey, you know, run my team the way it's supposed to be run. And, um, you know, another coach just gave me the keys to the car and told me to drive it. So, uh, um, you know, what I had... What was that like playing for Riley? Because I know he was hard on dudes, especially coming from Don Nelson, where he was probably uh, a lot easier on players. Well, yeah, you know, no, I'm going to tell you this. Nelly wasn't that easy on players now. He, he was tough on players, too. Um, um, I, mean, I mean, at times, he, he, knew when, he knew when to get on you. And then, but Nelly was laid back. Um, um, and he was prepared, just like Pat Rowley, always prepared, uh, always know what he wants, always know what his team needs. Um, um, but, you know, um, you know, they, they was like practice was like three hours, practice, was, you know, four hours. No, you know, we, 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 it was a lot of learning going into that. You know, you're looking at film. You're not on your feet for three, four hours. You, we weren't on our okay. feet. We were watching film. We was um we was talking about a lot of things what we could could do what we uh shouldn't do how we should play play this way that way uh, but it wasn't like you know it was four hours on our feet no 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 I asked Pat one day I said well why don't we practice for two and a half hours he said the game is two and a half hours I was like okay that's self explanatory right there. You know, I mean, if you can't if you can't play for two and a half hours and sustain yourself for two and a half hours, you, I mean, you can't be like I I, I want to play forty eight minutes because at times you got to play forty five, forty six minutes, and you got to be ready to play that at a particular time. So we was all our whole team was ready to play whoever you put in the team on the I mean on the court at a particular time. Let's play, but we was always well prepared. Um, I liked it, you know, it it because I grew up. That way, I grew up bumping, grinding, physical, uh, uh, playing hard in the trenches. I grew up that way in Chicago, and um, uh, you know it, it was great for me. I, I loved, it. I loved being, you know, prepared each and every day. Um, I love uh, uh, practicing, working on our games. Um, I, did, I to me, it was different, you know, because that because all my life, that's what I did. You know, and uh, but you know, but we, but it wasn't like what people said. You know, I mean, he he wants you to be in shape. He wants your body fat to be down because he wants the optimum of your your career. He wants you to be at the optimum shape. So he so when you out there playing, you have you have no gripes. You won't get hurt. You're gonna be in tip top shape, and you're gonna be able to do what you're able to do, like you did your first two or three years in your career, or when you was in college. So that's what he wanted you to be. And that's what, that's where we was. And I, I, I had no gripes about it. I enjoyed it. Now he was known for motivating, motivating players. Like he, that his pregame speeches, sometimes he'd use props and do, do crazy stuff. What was kind of the most, the craziest thing he did in a pregame speech with y'all? Well, you know, after the game, um, he did, uh, you know, before games, pre-game speeches was uh, he got me hyped. Just you know, I'm I was always, always uh, ready to play games because I I just love to play the game. But he um 
one pregame speech, he was talking about um, there were so many of them, but he was talking about <laughs> how um, the Lakers and um, you know um, got to Game Seven with the Boston Celtics and everything, and um, he said that you know before that game, Kareem, you know, he got killed. And you could tell Kareem didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to hear nothing, nothing, nothing. They came to practice and practice their butt off. And uh, you could tell that they were so focused that uh, whatever whatever he was talking about or about to say, he didn't say But he, uh, at that particular game. But he said uh, he, he was talking anyway. And, um, um, you know, and he knew at that particular time, he was like, I don't need to, I need to stop talking and just let them go out there and play. And they went out there and played and they won. That's the game they won. Another thing, another game, he he he, uh, he said, Tim, he said, when we got all got traded there. We all went to our different respectable other teams and won. I went to Golden State and won. Dan Marley went to Phoenix and won. Um, Zoe went to Charlotte and won. We went to uh, uh, what else? We went to. We went to a couple of places and won. And we in New York. And um, you could tell he really wanted this game. He said, "Tim, just go out there and tell the fellas, you know, um, get this one for me." I said, "All right, I got you." We went out there. And I think we going out by like twenty. And uh, wow. you could just tell in his eyes that he 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 was loving that. You know, and that, that that's what we did for each other, man. It was like family there. We just we just played, and you know, he 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 had everything for us there: massages, uh, you know, whatever we needed to to stay healthy and stay ready. He 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 he. he that's what that's what he he does for his teammates. He loves his teammates. That's why he don't like to make changes. You don't see him making changes. You know, he loved his team right there. He always believed that they they going to do the job and and um and that's the way he believes and and if 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 a lot of people trust him, you you go out there and just play cuz he trusts you. He wouldn't trust you if he wasn't there. If you wasn't there, he wouldn't trust you. I mean, if he was there, it, it, he trusts you. He got to trust you cuz that that he he brought you there. So, that's what I love now, about him. Your rivalries, you mentioned the Knicks. That was your greatest rivalry when you were in Miami. Tell me something about those series that, that we don't know. Those, oh, those man. rivalries, I should say, that rivalry. Oh, man. That, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. We, we, we as, as probably two guys uh, uh, loved each other. That was Pat and Zoe. Everybody else on each team hated each other. I mean, we would see each other at a restaurant during the summer. We wouldn't speak to one another. We wouldn't talk to one another. We wouldn't shake each other's hands. Uh, if we wow. did, it was phony. You know, it, it was just that yeah. type of rivalry. You know, sometimes, I, I think sometimes today, some of those guys uh, and us, we still have grudges with each other, I think, you know. And, and that's a shame to say, but that, I mean, that, that, that's the way the game was. And um, uh, but yeah, we. I mean, it was. Was that was, around was, the league like that? Like any teams you had rivalries with? Was that how it was? Because obviously, it's not like that today. No, it it wasn't like every team had that. That that was just uh, the Heat and the Knicks because um, I think they, you know, what happened with Pat leaving there, coming to Miami. Yeah. That 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 was the whole thing, and and and, and um, they took they they took exception to that, and they they wanted to you know they wanted to destroy us. <laughs> Excuse me, which whichever way they wanted to, and um, you know physically and mentally, we wasn't having it. You know we wasn't having it. We we just had a nasty attitude, just like they did. So hmm. that's why the, the hard fall games was hard fall games and. And, um, you know, each and every game was hard fought. You might blow the team out here and there, but in the playoffs, yeah, everybody's playing hard and wanted to win and wanted to destroy you. Yeah, those were some hard fought games. I remember Jeff Van Gundy grabbing onto the leg of Alonzo. 
morning when I think Zoe and Larry Johnson it was getting into yeah. it. What yeah. what was that? Yeah. Take me through that story. That game, that was crazy. Man, that, that was crazy. That was crazy, man. That was really crazy. Um um we still trying to figure out why that happened. Um but you know, <laughs> it, it was just it was just a crazy, crazy atmosphere. It was going on because Patrick couldn't play because he was hurt at that particular time. Yeah. And um, um, they, I think they most physical guy that could play offensively and defensively against Zoe was Larry Johnson at that particular time. So Larry play was playing Zoe, and um, he was he was being physical with Zoe. And 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 at times, you know, they they let you do particular things um, um, in the playoffs versus, you know, just in the playoffs. And, and yeah. um, you know, they just, you know, you it, it just took a toll on both of them. Both of them was into each other. Both of them was fouling each other. And the refs just let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And game five, game six, that that's the way it was. They, they just went at it. And uh, they both really just lost their minds, basically. And then you had Jeff Van Gundy. I, I think he he didn't realize what he was doing because now you don't go after the other guy uh, on, yeah. uh, on another team. You go after your own guy and bag him up. He went after <laughs> Zoe. And he, 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 you know what? He, he even said, he even came out that was foolish of him because he could not only hurt himself, but he could have hurt Zoe too. And, yeah. um, uh, but you know, but you at the time, you, the rivalry, you mad at this person, you mad at that person. Then you, then a fight breaks out. Then you just only thing you can do is just, you know, he probably slipped and fell and, and whatever. But you know, he just grabbed onto the first thing he grabbed one to, you know. <laughs> and actually, and actually, that really stopped the fight because everybody was like, "What are you doing, Jeff?" Everybody you laughing know? at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody laughing. What, what are you was doing, your Jeff? What, what? When you saw him, when you saw him on the Alonzo's leg. I, yeah, I, that's the way I was. I'm like, what are you doing? You can hurt him. What 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 are you doing? You trying to tackle him? What what are you doing? I don't yeah. you know what do you do? But but you know, uh, everybody at that particular time, you like I said, you don't know what's gonna happen. You lose your mind, and the first thing the reaction is, let me stop him from fighting my player. And like I said, he probably didn't want to get hit, so the first thing he tried to grab him by the by the waist and he just slipped and fell and, and he it landed on his legs and he kept holding his legs. So that's what probably now, happened. If a tag team match, Patrick Ewing and Charles Oakley against Alonzo and PJ Brown, who who wins that? <laughs> Man, you know, back 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 in, in Charles Oakley heyday when he was young and and really, really strong near, you know, you got, you got. I, I go, I go. With, oh, you know, I, I love yeah. Zoe. I love PJ. Uh, uh, you know, I, I tell you this. Uh, 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 Patrick's not gonna do nothing because that's Zoe boy. So they not, yeah. they not gonna do nothing. The ones that really gonna be going at it, and they, and you know what? They love each other too. Is PJ and Oak. So they oh, good really? friends now too. So yeah, yeah, they good friends now too. So you know it. it they, you never, you you actually never seen them four get into any type of stuff. You never seen. It. They just play hard against one another. So it, 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 you know, it was it was it was always something else. But them four never. They just played hard. They bang bang bang, uh, push push push, fought and played the game the way it was. Slapped down, gave you hard fouls. But they never got into a shouting match. They never, you know, got into a. Uh, 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 a trash talking match. They never did. I always used to feel like, because you guys, you know, I felt like Patrick had a mental edge over Zoe because, you know, Patrick was older. He kind of had been a mentor to Zoe. And because I thought y'all had better teams, but they would beat y'all a lot in the playoffs. You know, like, did you feel that way too? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Patrick, uh, he made timely shots and made timely moves at the end of ball games to put them up. You know, um, um, just like Allen Houston making that shot. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it hits the rim five times before it go in. 
You know, they, they always made the timely moves uh, at, at the end of the ball games to beat us. Uh, uh, but we, you know, we all we put ourselves in that predicament because we could have went down on the other end and, and, and made shots too. So, but we was up or was tied up, or whatever. But, um, but yeah, Pat, Patrick, when you seven feet, even though you six ten, six eleven, and you the best shot block in the NBA, um, seven feet is still seven feet. And, and Patrick was seven feet. And he, uh, you know, he was still just a, just a little bit longer than Zoe, just a little bit. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he could shoot over him, um, uh, you know, shoot a little floater over him, whatever. But he was just a little bit taller than him. Now, you, you played, obviously, against Jordan, and you coached against LeBron, so you've seen him close up. Everybody debates which one's better, which one's the GOAT. Where do you stand on that discussion, LeBron versus Michael? You know, it's no choice. To me, it's Michael. You know, to me, it's Michael. Um, in the era we played in and what Michael did, um, you know, how he did it, the bumps and bruises he had to go through, um, um, you know, the, the mental stage that he, he you know, that, that it took him to, um, you know, it's, uh, to me, it's Michael. It's going to always be Michael because I, I played against him, you know. Yeah. Um, not taking nothing away from um, 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 LeBron. LeBron, my guy. Love watching him play. Uh, love watching him orchestrate everything out there on the, on the, um, on the court. Uh, you, know, um, you know, the big dunk. I mean, a big block shot. Um, yeah. You know. Um, you know, he, he, he's six nine, and he can control the game just like Magic Johnson could. He has got a better jumper than Magic. Uh, but, you know, um, you can't take – I mean, Michael, six championships, went there six times, won six times, got MVP six times. Um, yeah. But, you know, you, like I said, you, can't, you still can't take nothing away from uh, LeBron. They, his era was different from uh, this era. And um, – you know, we, we would never we would never see them go against each other. We would never see that happen. We could always speculate. But um 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 you know and, and if you gotta understand, Michael came in after his sophomore year. LeBron came yep. in after high school. So LeBron got two more years Ahead of I Michael, think Jordan just, might even. I think he played three. I think he was after his junior year. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It was after his junior year. Yeah, it's after yeah. his junior. Year. I'm sorry. So, so LeBron got three more years in the NBA ahead of Jordan. So a yeah. lot of people don't put that in in, the, in the perspective either. So it's a lot of things that go into that longevity. You know, um, um, you know, and Michael was hurt for a year or two. You know, he was out yeah. for a whole year before, I mean, like, you know, a bunch of games before he came back and did what he did in the playoffs. Um, so, you know, it was, it's, it's a lot of things going into that. But, you know, me, it's, it's going to always be Michael and um, um, at, in that era. So, um, well, before you go, I want to ask you about what's going on now in the NBA with the playoffs. Who do you have in the East, you think, LeBron gets to the finals again, or you think Boston can uh, can pull this out? I tell you this, man. If 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 he gets to Game Seven, I, you can't bet against LeBron. To me, yeah, against Game Seven with with these guys, how young these guys are um, in Boston, um, um, I think that I, I wouldn't bet against Le, against LeBron in Game Seven. So uh, I think. These next two games, especially for for the Boston Celtics, are very very critical. These next two games, um, they got to win tonight. They got to win yep. tonight. It's like a yeah, pressure they game tonight. tonight. They, they lose tonight, it's over with. So I, you know, I think LeBron is going to make it to uh, to the finals, but I don't think that he's going to have enough to beat either Golden State or 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 um, um, Houston. So I just who don't you think got, they who you like in that series. Golden State. Houston. I like Golden State. I like Golden State. If you know, like if Eagle Dolly come back, uh, 
he hurt him. You know, that hurt him, him not being there yeah. last night. Uh, you know, he does a lot of things out there on the basketball court. I'm not talking about scoring. I'm just talking about just his intangibles, you know, tipping the ball away, uh, uh, 50-50 balls, uh, diving for balls, um, ha- putting your body in front of folks, blocking shots, uh, coming up with the key rebound and laying it up, you know, uh, playing good defense on people, just a hand up. Um, that kind of, that that really hurt him, him not being there because they had to play all they had to play that a lot of minutes. Those guys had to play a lot of minutes, and you know it was just tough for him. It was tough yeah. for him last night. But I think they, but 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 if like I always say, Golden State, all of them got to stay healthy. All of them, the core got to stay healthy. If they don't stay healthy, they don't win. They don't win. So, but yeah. if they stay healthy, if they healthy, if they healthy. They win. They win this. Um, but, you know, now now the momentum is back, I think, in Houston's court. They just got to come out and play like they want it instead of, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, being lackadaisical. I think they get – if Houston come out and play harder and play like the way they did last night, tomorrow, they can get that game tomorrow. But they got to come out and not be lackadaisical, not be, you know – pass up and uh, you know now was don't know what's going on they got to come out and play the same way you know and and, I, that, and I, that, that I want to ask you before before you go because you mentioned Chris Jackson earlier Mahmoud Abdul Rauf earlier right. and his handle and all that Phil Jackson said a few years ago he compared <laughs> Steph to Chris Jackson or Mahmoud and um People, people kind of mocked him like, man, that's crazy. But you played against Mahmoud. Do you think that's a fair comparison? Like in today's NBA, do you think he could have been a Steph Curry? I'm on, uh, see, they, he, I don't think everybody understands what Phil Jackson is saying. We're talking about the quick release. Mahmoud had a quick release. He had come off right off the dribble, and gone. The ball was gone, and it was all net. Same way with, with Steph. He'd come off, and next thing you know, he's shooting the ball real quick. Before you get a yeah. hand up, the ball is in, is in the rim already, in the hoop already. That's what Phil Jackson was saying. Phil Jackson was saying he got Mahmoud Raouf had handle, and he gets that ball up very, very quick, and he can stop on the dime and shoot it on the dime. That's what that remind uh, uh, Steph Curry of of Mahmoud. That's the way Steph Curry comes down. He comes down. He might do a move, put it between his legs, and then stop and pop. You know, yeah. and he and, and he gets to the hole too. That's the way Mahmoud did too. That's that's see people get upset about yeah Mahmoud. Well, he wasn't doing this. He wasn't doing that. And then they get off into something else. No, we talking about the quick release. Because, yes, both of them had a quick release. Mahmoud had got one of the quickest release in NBA history before Steph came into the league. And now Steph has the same type of release Mahmoud has when he was stopping and popping and coming off the dime and shooting the ball. And you didn't know what he was going to do, you know, because he was trying you, to guard him. Ever... And... No, go ahead. And you was trying to guard him. He stopped and just shoot it. Or you, you know, you 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 try to guard him. You t- I got to beat him to this spot before he gets to the rim. He will just stop and shoot it. So that's the quick release we're talking about. He, I think that that uh, uh, Phil Jackson was talking about. Do you ever envy today's guards? I mean, the the way they shoot threes. I mean, the freedom they have. Do you ever envy and wish, man, if I played in this era, I'd be putting up ten threes a game. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Right, right. You know, you know what? I could have put up ten threes a game if I wanted to, but I had other teammates to get the ball to. I get, you know, I want, I need to get my other teammates involved. Um, um, you know, I had to get Deshaun Lennon involved. I had to get uh, 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 Dan Marley involved. I had to get, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, Mitch and Chris and Rod Higgins involved. I had to get PJ Brown involved. That's the way the game was. Then I had to get those people involved and make sure that they was happy. So they go down on the other end and do what we asked them to do on defense. You know, they was guarding the hardest people. They were sticking the hardest people. So I need them to be happy. So I had to get them the ball, you know. 
But I don't, you know, I don't envy them. I love it. I'll tell you the truth, I love watching. I love watching it happen because it's really just street basketball, and it's imano imano, and um, uh, or pickup basketball. I shouldn't say street basketball. I say pickup basketball. It's imano imano, and let's see if you can stop me, or I can make you, you know, shoot a bad shot or a shot that you don't don't want to shoot, you know, and that and that's the way it is. But but it's very interesting. It's very interesting, and, and I like it. Um, sometimes the guys hold on to the ball too much. Uh, I wish they had passed it and then get it back. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I want, you know, uh, I love it. Great, great. Tim, man, I appreciate your time. Great stuff, man. And um, thanks a lot for joining In The Zone. Hey, no, thank you for having me anytime, Chris. You know, you got my number. Just let me know when you want me. All right, brother. Cool. Thanks, man. All right, thank you.